Welcome to the Bread and Butter, Danny Testimonial Talking Head Broadcast Package or Documentary Film, The Humble Interview. And at the risk of me insulting your ability to read a YouTube title or a thumbnail, we talk about interview lighting. There are so many things that go into an interview, but today we are just going to talk about some lighting setups that I use in my documentary and broadcast productions to get the right look for the right interview. And I'm keeping my talking head look simple so that you can see the difference in what happens when you actually use more elaborate lighting setups to get a good looking interview. We're doing three setups today. Let's talk about number one. The three point lighting setup. All my film students out there or all my people that started in broadcast journalism, this was probably the first lesson you ever got taught in the world of lighting. Three point lighting system utilizes a key light, a fill light, and a backlight in order to fully separate your subject from the background and give them that nice etched out pop to make your character stand out from whatever surrounding you have them in. And for me, it's the when in doubt, do this kind of lighting setup for interviews. For this setup, my key light is going to be the Aperture 300X going through this large sheet of bleach muslin, which I set up on a pretty cheap and simple crossbar. I do have the Light Dome Mini 2, but I think it's a little too small to be using for a key light here. I mean, look how sharp the light looks as I'm using it for my talking head portion here. So I'm gonna set up this much bigger source of diffusion in front of my key light to get a more softer look for my subject, which is me. The bigger the source, the softer the source. And then we'll just have the Fresnel cone attached in the front of the 300X and that is our key light. Our fill light will be the Amaran 60X with the Light Dome Mini 2 in front of it. It's important to know that in the three-point lighting setup, Diffusion is highly sought after because we're trying to add a sense of beauty and a sense of softness to the skin tones of our subject. We're not trying to be too gritty. We're not trying to be too edgy here. We're really just trying to get a soft, pleasant look for anybody that would be on camera. The Amaran 60X is a much smaller output light in comparison to 300X. So when we put a softbox in front of it, it acts great as a fill light on the shadow side of the subject, even when put all the way down to a single digit percentage. Now, I personally would not do this, but this surely is a way if you really are trying to get a solid lift out of your shadows. Personally, what I would do is actually not use a light as the fill source. I would instead use a bounce source to achieve the look. But for now, this will do as our fill light. And for an edge light, we will have my Pavo tube acting as a backlight, edge light, hair light, whatever you want to call it. This light simply serves as a little subtle touch to separate our subject from the backdrop. Think of it as using light to carve out your subject and really make them the most pronounced thing that you're seeing in the image. Sometimes edge lights can be too much. Sometimes they can be very subtle. It's kind of up to you to make that distinction. But for me, I am using the Pavo tube diffused with some leftover bleach muslin in front of it. And I'm literally setting it to 1% because I'm just trying to get this little outline of light on my back shoulders and my hair just to give that final touch of separation. And that is my three-point lighting setup. The advantage of the three-point lighting setup is that in theory, you could be in any environment in any scenario and know that you can have control of at least the lighting that goes into your subject. As you can see in this shot here, I have window lighting and natural lighting, but I want control over it. So I expose my camera to those windows, control my highlights, and then I let the three-point lighting setup actually get me the look I'm looking for. And this is a very plug-and-play kind of system. Instead of using the Amaran 60X, you can replace it with a bounce card to get less of a source acting as your fill light. Or you can get real dramatic with it and instead put negative fill on my right side to get even more contrast and deeper shadows on the right side of my face so that you can get a moodier, almost more cinematic look to your interview. And to be honest, you can even eschew an edge light at all, or you can use something even smaller to sell the effect, like say, an MC light or a very dim practical in the backdrop. Now let's get into the second setup, the Cove light. This is very much a poor man's version of what Roger Deakins has famously coined, Cove lighting. My version of this is taking my two Pavo tubes, which already have diffusion because they are in a plastic tube, setting them up on both my C-stands with Cardellini clamps, and then fastening my sheet of bleach muslin to both ends of those tube lights, angling them so until you get a shape like this. 
This is essentially a poor man's coat of light. And if you wanna go the extra mile with this, you can just set up a bigger diffusion source to cover the entire corner of a room that you want the light to be coming from. Now me personally for this, I have my cove lights on this side of the room because I wanna motivate the window lighting that's already available to us. This is actually my go-to for a lot of my interviews because it really is a one-stop shop and it guarantees a soft wrap of light around my subject. And because it's using tubes and because it's using a bigger source of bleach muslin, I actually find the spill to be a little more pleasant and I don't have to worry so much about adding negative fill or getting an ultra bounce or some other bounce material on my right here in order to fill out the face here. I'm getting a much softer, dare I say, cinematic wrap across my subject's face. Also for me, this cove lighting style of setup can be used in a lot more than just interview setups. I actually think this setup would be fantastic for most narrative beats or music video beats, basically whenever you just need a simply built large and soft key source that's going to motivate available light, but give you a nice wrap around your subject to get that control you're looking for. Now, if you wanna add to the backlight, this is where I would actually use something like the 60X on like 1% and get my backlight using that. But then we're pretty much just setting up a three point lighting setup once again. So that's up to you. But if you're somebody that doesn't need something like the edge light or that broadcast or higher key kind of look, and you are leaning on something that's more focused on the wrapping of light and the cinematic feel, the cove light is the way to go. And you can do it pretty simply by yourself without a crew. Now, although I think the three point lighting setup has a place, I, it's just not normally for me because I think there's just a lot going on. And personally, I don't think a lot of genie is needed to make a good image, but this, setup is definitely a go-to for me for documentary and narrative because it's just a when in doubt way of how to get a soft look on the face easy wrap of light and also we're using the pavo tubes so they're battery powered if we need to run a gun with this we absolutely can it doesn't have to be as elaborate of a genie setup as some of the others which is why i prefer this normally over the three-point lighting setup the last setup is natural light if you're like me and you are a solo filmmaker, guerrilla filmmaker, or you find yourself just not having a crew for 90% of what you're doing, then by God, are windows just your best friend sometimes. It's also important to note that sometimes having all this stuff in your lighting setup for an interview, it might take something away from the actual interview itself. Not everyone is super comfortable being surrounded by lights, cameras, microphones, and all this stuff. And personally, if I'm doing a much more dramatic interview, I'm gonna prefer using natural light because it means I'm bringing in less gear, it means I have more time to focus on my subject, and most importantly, my subject is far more comfortable in a natural light setup because it's cozier, we're probably just in a hotel room or in their home, and it just feels less built so I can have more of a natural conversation with my subject. Now that gets more into how to actually conduct an interview, which isn't the biggest point of this video in particular, but know that using a natural light setup does in fact make a more comfortable, a more comfortable and welcoming environment. But also as the solo filmmaker, it means you can really turn and burn an interview because you probably don't have the time, you probably don't have the money. And if you do have the money, sometimes this look just works depending on the subject material. If you guys wanna see a part two of the other things that go into interviews and more documentary type filmmaking, which is what The Sick Shop is really leaning into this year, comment below. I wanna hear what you guys wanna see. We can do anything from how you actually conduct your interviews, how you actually go about finding interview subjects, and also how you utilize the camera more so than the lighting to elevate or really direct the vision of the interview you're going for. It's such a simple part of any film or documentary, but it is always the beating heart and thing that you are gonna find yourself coming back to a lot. So it's important to master the ability to do interviews because that'll master your ability to light, direct, and speak with people, which I don't care what you're doing, be it documentary, be it narrative film, be it news or music videos. If you can't light people, frame up people, talk to people, you might find filmmaking a little difficult. But that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys go out and practice some of these setups and find out what lighting setup is best for you when it comes to the beautiful world of interviews.
This has been Davis with The Six Shop. Thank you, and hopefully I will see you on the next one. Goodbye.